Hi, I'm Phil Bridges, owner of Straight Arrow Repair. Ever want to know how a repairman fixes things? Well, come with me and I'll show you how I solve problems. Let's make things better together. commercial buildings, campers, um, whatever a customer needs, that's what I try to do. Exception of carpet. They'll sell it uh, installed for free, and so I can't really compete with that. And it keeps my knees in my back lasting longer. Um, anyway, we are putting five and a quarter inch trim in this mobile home by request of the customer. So it gives you an example of what you can do at your home. So what I would do first is I like to get tape measures that, of course I can read the eighths. Now some people like all the, it says what it, you know, actually is five eighths, three quarters, seven eighths. I know what they are because I'm very familiar with all the dividing of the lines. So you choose what you want to do. Um, so I'm going to measure From one corner to another, and I'm about 48 and a quarter. That's a 45 on both sides. So 48 and a quarter, and now we're going inside. Now, I'm using a real uh, inexpensive uh, pencil that you would use for school or things like that. You don't have to. But it certainly is really small and makes a very small line, gets you very, very close to what you want. You can use a great big construction pencil. You don't have to allow for that thickness of the lead in the pencil to make sure your line is in the right place. And then you cut. So, all right, let's go in here where I've been trying to concentrate my mess. We have already done 320 feet, painted all of it two coats. Uh, installed 320 feet, which is a football field of five and a quarter trim. You want to pan around and you can see some of it. We're still going to, we've already set the nails, we're going to seal all that up and then touch up the paint. And this is where I've been making my mess, and these are all the pieces. This is a back trip that we took off. And we took a a piece of this, put it up against the batten strip, marked it and then cut it, and then those are the pieces that are either on the bottom or the up and down, with this mark across the top, and then take a razor knife and cut it. So, now, we're going to do the 48 and a quarter with an angle on both sides. This is not an expensive uh, saw. I did not buy a new, uh, I have several saws so when this one goes out, I've got others. I've been looking at a battery power saw. That might be something I do in the future. And I'll let you know how I feel about it so you can know before you actually uh, spend the money what I find out. Not that I'm the expert. But anyway, first thing I want to do is kind of set my saw at 45 degrees to the month over here. And there's straight up zero and 45. Now you can do this with a hand saw at a regular miter box uh, early on some 28 years ago when I didn't have enough money for a saw. Uh, I did that because I did a lot of small uh, trim which would be mostly uh, shoe mold and quarter round, which is very small. You, you don't need a big old saw to do that. So that's what I did. Uh, since that time, I've had a number of saws. So anyway, I set it to a 45. It doesn't have the fancy guard on it, but I try to set first. I push it down flat, keep it 
tight against the guard here. Now make sure that it's not going to get my hand. Breaks long before I bought it and it wore out. Alright, so now we got a 45 on the right and we need a 45 on the left at 48 and a quarter. So let's do this. We'll turn it over. Made a little arrow where four eight and a quarter is. So when I fix it to my speed square, which is like Johnson speed square, you don't have to be that you get a plastic one. You can uh, use uh, Big frame square, which is a larger size of this. You can use this, or you can use this, which allows you to adjust and use angles and everything. If you'll notice how much I paid for that at a garage sale. So while you're out there shopping about and you see a deal on a tool, Pick it up because this is about eleven, twelve dollars or more. So, just choices, lots of choices. So uh, now I'm going to cut the other side. Now I knew that the longest point is forty-eight and a quarter, and I turned it upside down. Because I'm going to cut it at an angle like that, so it'll be the same angle on both sides. Use your noggin all over this stuff. See, we have an angle on both sides. Let's go try it out and see. Taking my tape measure with me. So I'll have it for the next measurement. This is a, a battery powered Ryobi. It's not as good as the pass load that I had, but it's extremely handy in a lot of ways because it uses batteries. And I say it's not as good because it doesn't drive down as hard. Uh, you can adjust it to get it where it does better. So sometimes it's kind of random. Its strength is not as strong, but it's extremely handy to have all your batteries and all your tools where you don't have to have an air compressor uh, which is what the pass load had a, a butane charger and it would kick the nail in uh, you know and it has a battery too which meant you had uh, they wanted eighty dollars probably ninety dollars now for a battery whereas uh, this is forty whenever I get them on sale so uh, it does the job we just have to uh, set which you will with air nailer. Air nailer would require a compressor, hose, and the nail gun which requires a lot of maintenance keeping it oiled. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, it's just it keeps me from having to carry all that extra so and, and maintain everything. So here I am. I know that there is uh, probably a stud there because they nailed to it and probably a stud there because they nailed to it. Then, since they've tried to caulk and finish over, looks like there's a row of nails through here. So we'll... That held pretty good. Now, if you don't know, and you're trying to get the top fastened, you can do what we call a butterfly, which is an angle that way, and an angle that way. 
Now, what that does is, if you're holding it in, it won't pull out because this is at an angle. Same way with this. All right? That's a way to tighten up that top. Um, I know that this material is a half inch thick. So I can literally bump up on the uncut side, measure over to this TP trim, 37 and three quarters, you have a little bit of room. Add a half inch, be 38 and a quarter. So let's go cut that. Right hand side angle, 38. Be neat if I had a stand and all that. That'd be more to carry. There's my right hand cut. We cut straight. Now that's standing up. That's what we're going to have to drive down with a nail set. And we'll show you to how we do that. All right, so that's set. It's going to be a left hand cut, a straight cut on the right. Sixty-four and a half. I want to give it room, so it'll be sixty-seven with a left-hand cut. There's a lot of different sizes of nail sets as far as the uh, sh the thickness. There, this is a uh, Dasco Pro. I don't know if I would know that you have to have that. You can go to any kind of place, and I've actually used nails. Or a Phillips screwdriver, that's a hassle because it leaves sometimes an X if you drive it too far. So you put it on the nail. So we'll be doing that all over the house. What you've done, Clay here has done most of it already. So um, then we'll come back and fill the cracks on the bottom, in the corners, on the top. And uh, anyway, left hand, 67. Cut off on the right. Cut square. Believe me, I make mistakes, so don't beat yourself up if you make mistakes. Nobody's perfect. Alright, so our cut is on the left hand side, so what do we do? Oh, I'm going to just turn it upside down. Just 
adjust my saw. Now it's on the left side. When we said 67. Ten side angle. You'll have to get up your own skill and speed, but you can do that. Uh, you don't have to use five and a quarter. This is pretty beat up, but it's in a closet, so it'd be all right. Uh, well, we can probably fill that in, make it look pretty nice, even for a closet. But uh, since I don't have outside corners at this point to show you what I do on outside corners I measure the width if it's if it's a short corner here here I measure from here to here on that corner give it just a little bit more okay and so how do I get there okay so what I do is I know I'm gonna have I lay it upside down set it at 45 Make sure my hand don't get cut right on camera, which I've never done, but I hope never to do. Okay, if I remember, I told you that measurement from here to here. What I do is I say, oh, if it's three and a half, I make my mark. Notice that's set up for like a wall, uh, but I never fasten this first. I always bring my sides up to it and and tie them all together, whatever it takes. See what if I need to change the angle or change the length, something. So I put both sides up here so I can make sure I got it right. I can even shim a little bit if I need to to get it up or down or in or out uh, on the sides, you know. So that's how you do an outside corner. There's a lot more to it, but I want you to know that it can be done. And uh, it looks really cool on a mobile home. So uh, we'll get you along and we'll show you uh, how we do the, the caulking and what it looks like at the finished product. But you can do it. It's Phil Bridges. If you like what you saw, you think it might be helpful to somebody else, push that like button and let other people know what you and I now know. And we'll work together toward making a brighter future. And by the way, we're not Americans, we're Americans. See you next time.